easy on some other shit. Yo, what is good boys? It's Relic. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some realistic drums because I just found a technique more recently that I really like and yeah, it sounds pretty good. This is what it sounds like. Yeah, you kind of get the point, but yeah, I'm going to show you basically how I went about doing it. So let's just go ahead and solo this guy and let me kind of show you what I did. So the first thing um, I definitely would recommend is just using like acoustic samples in general. So acoustic kick, snare, maybe you could use an EDM type of kick that has a little bit of like top end to it. Kind of like for like house music and stuff like that, that would be pretty good. Basically a whole bunch of just like acoustic sounding drums in general would work really well for this. I have acoustic hi-hats, which um, if I zoom in, you can see that I'm changing them slowly. So basically what I do is I will like copy one over and then I will kind of go in at the bottom clip and I'll hold alt and I'll just drag. There we go. And it offsets the start basically. The first hit I have is always full on and then I kind of have it slowly taper off to kind of give it almost like a real like drum kind of sound as if the hi-hats were kind of like being played at different velocities. This is kind of what it sounds like on its own. On its own doesn't sound too realistic, but it's kind of like an accumulation of a bunch of layers really. Then I also have a crash, which has a EQ and it looks like a delay on it with the OTT. Nothing fancy in there. Pretty standard. From here, I think I use a kick and a snare, which sound like this. And this on its own actually sounds pretty good, um, but the real secret to getting this to sound realistic is adding a drum break and band passing it under it. So I have this drum break right here, if you can listen. And I honestly didn't do any chopping, but you can easily chop this up and kind of get it to fit the, the groove of the drums. And basically what I did is I EQ'd out the lows. It looks like I did it at 240 Hertz and 6k. I think I actually had it lower but it actually didn't sound as good so I added a little bit more uh what is it like mid to top range and all together it kind of sounds like this. Yeah which is pretty cool. There are a couple spots where I do um, duplicate the snare at the end because it kind of stops on the snare. And then lastly I have some processing on the drums themselves. And this is kind of what kind of seals it all together. I have a parallel compression. Um, so I have a dry signal right here. And then I have a wet signal, which is basically a glue compressor on the drum full parallel preset. I have it doing a high cut at 1.4K Hertz, just so it's like doing parallel compression on just the high end. And then I also have a saturator just cause I think it sounds good. I'll play it with and without. Honestly, so subtle. I honestly could go without it maybe because I don't even really hear that much of a difference, honestly, but it sounds pretty good. And then I also add a convolution reverb. And this is kind of where uh, it gets pretty interesting because typically when you record drums out, you have a room microphone. And this is kind of what I'm using for the room mic basically. And I use a drum booth presence and the convolution, I think it's the pro. Actually, this might be the regular. Um, drum booth present is in the Convolution Reverb Pro. This is a live suite um, or a Max for Live plugin. So I definitely would get on that if you have it. And then I have the mix down really low, honestly. It does make a difference if you listen back. Let me just accentuate it real quick. So as you can hear, I kind of dial it back and it kind of gives it more of a like realistic kind of sound. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to be too, I guess, lengthy on this video. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.